Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about Heavenly Mother. This is a subject I know that for a lot of people is a little touchy for whatever reason, but I want to discuss the situation around it, the doctrine behind it, and a little bit of the history and just kind of my thoughts real fast. For those that might not know too much about Heavenly Mother is just, you know, in the LDS Church, we believe that we are uh, sons and daughters of heavenly parents, which means a heavenly father and a heavenly mother. You know, so they're, you know, separate beings, um, and they're both gods and celestial beings. Probably the most um, popular uh, reference to heavenly mother was by a hymn slash poem by Eliza R. Snow. Um, it's in the hymn book and speculates that, you know, I feel like she says that she feels that there is a Heavenly Mother out there. Um, a lot of the close associates by Joseph, uh, in Joseph Smith's time um, account that he talked about Heavenly Mother and um, that doctrine. So, and ever since then, it's, it is a doctrine uh, that we believe and um, has been touched upon time by time. Um, Gordon B. Hinckley, he speculated and said the same thing, that, you know, logic and reasoning tells that there is a heavenly mother, um, but that we do not pray to her. Um, that's like a big thing. Uh, we do not worship anyone except for our heavenly father. Um, but he said, Gordon B. Hinckley said, just because we don't pray to her doesn't diminish her glory and, you know, and her value. Um, you know, and most recently in General Conference, Elder Runlin uh, uh, said a very similar thing. And he said that everything we know about Heavenly Mother is in the Gospel Topics essay on the LDS.org uh, website. Um, if you haven't read that essay, it's only a few paragraphs along. I highly recommend you do. Uh, it's a pretty good summary of what we believe um, and uh, the doctrine of Heavenly Mother. Um, so the reason I wanted to talk about this was because there's a lot of controversy around Heavenly Mother and even the, like, discussion about her, which I feel I understand why, but I also don't get it also. And I don't get it because, uh, I don't under I don't agree with the arguments. So we're going to go into a little bit of maybe about that, those arguments on why we don't really talk about her or that doctrine very much in the church or and and see if they are really real like arguments to be made, right? Um, the first one is that we don't know much about Heavenly Mother. Uh, Elder Redlin made kind of that case. He said, you know, that's all, we, you know, read the gospel topics, I say that's all we know. Um, that is kind of tr true and false at the same time. Um, yes, like the specifics and any specific details about Heavenly Mother, yeah. We don't really know much. We don't know how she looks like. We don't know what she does. We don't know her f favorite drink. We don't, we don't know. We don't know these things, okay? Uh, but I would make the argument that we don't know much about Heavenly Father either. Um, in the LDS Church, we know that uh, Jehovah, who is the uh, God of you know the Old Testament, is actually Jesus Christ. Um, so whenever you're reading through the Old Testament and a lot of the New Testament, um, you are reading actually Jesus Christ and his role um, representing God the Father. Um, if there's very few instances in the scriptures we actually hear from God the Father himself. Um, there's very little. Um, uh, there, there's only a handful from my understanding um, of times we even know we, he spoke. Um, so, but we speculate a lot um, from what Jehovah's actions and also Jesus Christ's um, characters and attributes. So we uh, attribute almost everything we know for, about Heavenly Father because of Jesus Christ and Jehovah and his role. Um, so 
I once again, um, and I think the similar thing goes about Holy Ghost. Um, he's a god and deity. We don't really know much about, you know, them, and uh, but we speculate a lot, you know, about the Holy Ghost, and we talk about the Holy Ghost pretty in depth at church. It's a very normal thing, right? Also, if you look um, and Google BYU uh, Heavenly Mother Studies. There's actually a whole um, study and collection of references of Heavenly Mother through church leaders. Um, and some of these are more sensitive than others. Some are more briefly as Heavenly Parents. Um, but they have hundreds of accounts about Heavenly Mother. So it's definitely, there's a lot more information about Heavenly Mother out there. Um, but for whatever reason, and maybe the reasons we'll go into, they have been minimalized. Um, I remember I took an Old Testament class also, and, um, something that was super interesting was he talked about how, um, through the interpretation of the Torah and, uh, the Hebrew scholars and all that, that there were so many things that were taken out of the scriptures, um, and doctrines that were just not, you know, like they didn't feel it was relevant or they felt it was a little weird or they didn't like it anymore. Um, and he pointed out one of the things is any is a lot of female representation and also like any mention of a female deity. They really tried to bury that um, or take that out of the scriptures, especially the Old Testament. Um, some things did make it still um, through. Uh, you know, in the Old Testament, um, in the creation, it says, you know, that, uh, you know, Adam and Eve were made in their image, you know, um, man and woman, um, you know, so, you know, saying that their, that woman was made in an image of someone, right, of, of a female god, um, so, yeah, and there's a lot of that, and, you know, he theorized there's a lot of symbolism in the Garden of Eden about, you know, um, uh, about he uh, a, a female god or heavenly mother. And throughout the Old Testament, there was a lot of, um, you know, um, well, I'm not a, the, you know, a religious scholar, but there are a lot of artifacts and out there of female, um, um, like, deities and that they had. Um, so, it is at least... It looks like there's a lot of evidence that there was an erasure of like female representation also like and also like the doctrine of a female god and but that's why um, you know the restoration is super cool because these things that were lost or taken away can be revealed or restored today and that was one of those things you know a heavenly mother so I think that strengthens you know that argument that, you know, it was something that was lost and that it was brought again for, because it was an important piece of doctrine, right? Um, and that's the next argument. A lot of people say, Heavenly Mother is not relevant. Um, I would argue, like, first, how can you um, say what is relevant in the gospel for people and what isn't relevant for the gospel and people? You know, for a lot of people, having a testimony of tithing, that's why they're in the church. Or a, gospel, a, a testimony of the Book of Mormon, a testimony of the Word of Wisdom. You know, these are all things that are in different, um, you know, spheres or areas in the, in the gospel, in the church. But um, but they have different weights and importance to everyone. Obviously, you know, the main focus should be Jesus Christ um, and the atonement. Um, that's that should be the main focus for all members. But tangentially, I know people that who whose testimony is hugely based off you know just the Book of Mormon or just the New Testament. Or, you know, Doctrine and Covenants, or Joseph Smith, you know? I'm not gonna argue, you know, like, you know, what your testimony is built of, you know? As long as you have a good relationship with God, 
you know, like, I'm not gonna judge that. That's not my place. Um, so, um, so I think it is relevant. Um, and I think it's always been relevant. Um, once again, like I said, these things have been echoed in the scriptures and in the restoration today. Why is it still um, talked about? And talking with a lot of members of the church, um, it has become like a, a, a testimony builder for a lot of members, um, especially women in my life that I know. They feel that it's a, it's a good reflection of, you know, deity and their celestial potential, right? Um, because we talk about that a lot and we talk about that in the temple, uh, but not so much outside, right? Um, so having that role or a model, having it more, you know, like closer and more um, relevant or talked about in church has been a um, an important thing for them. And, and it makes me wonder, like, how important it could be for me, this piece of doctrine, right? Um, it's not something I've explored too much, but knowing that I have a heavy mother, how does that, like, change things, you know? It must change something, right? Like, you know, me knowing um, I have a loving, heavenly father is super important for me. Me knowing I have, a, I have a loving, heavenly mother, how does that make me feel? You know, I love my mother in earth. Um, that is, She's probably the person I have a closer relationship than my father, uh, my earthly father, um, uh, for whatever reasons. And, you know, it's a very important thing for me, uh, even here on earth. So, um, I don't know. I think... It's a very relevant doctrine, and I think it's very relevant for a lot of people, but for whatever reasons, we're not talking about it, or we're scared to talk about it. Um, I think there's, um, well, the biggest argument is that, yeah, they're scared that people are going to like actively worship her. And I don't think that's what most members want to do. I think most members just want a testimony of Heavenly Mother and a relationship with a Heavenly Mother. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that because we have a relationship with all the Godhead, right? Uh, with the Holy Ghost. I have a relationship with Joseph, uh, with Jesus Christ. Uh, I have a relationship with Joseph Smith, right? Like how many of us have been asked to pray to know if Joseph Smith was a prophet? He's not a God. But we've all been asked that question, right? Um, and I understand why it's to gain testimony of the restoration of the church. But I'm just making that point. Um, you know, people pray to have a testimony of tithing, of all these uh, commandments and doctrines. Uh, why is this different? Why would it be different to uh, have a testimony of Heavenly Mother? Uh, once again, I'm not saying like praying to Heavenly Mother, but to gain a testimony of her and um, and see if like a relationship with her can be beneficial. And what does that look like? I don't know. Maybe that looks like studying about her, talking about her, um, maybe um, seeing how thinking about her role with Heavenly Father and the creation and judgment, you know? I don't know. I think it only benefits and amplifies all those doctrines. I don't see it as a deterrent. Um, but it's something that I'm still working and speculating on. You know, right now it's not a, the biggest testimony builder for me, but it is like, for me, it makes more sense. And, and it is like a kind of cool and like radical doctrine that we have compared to other Christian churches. Uh, very few churches, um, at least from what I know, no other Christian church has a separate female God. You know, they believe maybe that God might be genderless or whatever, but not a separate entity, you know? So, I don't know, I think it's a cool, relevant doctrine. And it's not something that, um, you know, it's being pushed by this liberal, you know, section of 
the church or members, it, it has been a relevant doctrine since the restoration of the church. And I would argue since the Old Testament, since the beginning, you know? So, um, I don't know. Uh, well, I think I know why. Why people are, are starting to talk about it. And I think it's because the idea that it's a, it's a female God. Um, I think people are uncomfortable. I think a lot of the Old Testament, um, you know, scholars were. Um, and that's why a lot of those things were taken out. Um, and I think also a lot of church members and church leaders are scared of where's that line of talking about her, worshiping her. Worshiping her. Um, we talk about, once again, like I said, we talk about Jesus Christ. We talk about Holy Ghost. We talk about Joseph Smith. You know, I talk about living prophets all the time at church um, and I don't worship any of them I don't worship I don't, the only person I worship is God the Father uh, through Jesus Christ um, and his atonement so why can't we have more space for Heavenly Mother I think it, it, it wouldn't be a deterrent I think honestly it's more of a societal cultural shift and maybe religious shift uh, uh, you know, a, f a feeling of comfortness uh, 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 among the uh, the doctrine. Um, I don't know. I think, um, just like any doctrine, I think it's great to, you know, get your own uh, beliefs on it and your own testimony about it, and you know, yeah, listen to living leaders and prophets and, and, and all that um, but also yeah know that there is a societal layer to it on maybe why we're not talking about it um, but yeah let me know your thoughts what do you think about this is Heavenly Mother a relevant thing um, feel free to share if you like and comment um, I hope you all have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.